We're here with uh, Andrew Grant, and uh, we were talking uh, before we, in the uh, previous interview, about uh, theater. You went into a, a theater company. As we know, theater is tough. Didn't quite make it. You know, it ran its course. It dissolved, and eventually, you got into writing. So, uh, how does theater? if you will, uh, influence your writing, or does it at all? Yeah, I would say it does very much. I think there are, uh, I mean, in the biggest sense, theatre is just another way of telling stories, yeah. just the same as, 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 telling, as, as writing a novel. But I think the two specific ways that it really does have an impact, first one is when it comes to dialogue, because mm -hmm. um, theatre is pretty much all dialogue. Yeah. You know, there's going to be stage direction, telling people where to move and, and, and what to do. The directors are going to obviously have a lot to, to do with that. But in terms of what's written, it's mainly dialogue. So if you've been involved with theater, I think that really helps when it comes to writing the dialogue sections of, sure. of novels. Certainly, those are the parts I really enjoy doing. Yeah. So I think the dialogue is very important. But I think the other thing, the other area that it really helps, is you kind of develop an instinctive sense of, if you imagine your cast of characters you know, on stage, you have to make sure that you have the right characters on stage at the right times and for the right length of time. Sure. You, know, you don't want the audience to start to forget who some of the key players are. You, know, you need them to be coming back at, at various times. And it's exactly the same with a novel. You've probably got all kinds of characters, normally way more than you realize. If you ever go through at the end and yeah. add up how many yeah. people, it's way more characters than you think. So as you're writing, mm -hmm. are, are you thinking this in your head? Are you, are you, are you uh, thinking, okay, I've got to give this dialogue section about a minute or two, and then I go into the next character? Or is it just sort of organically it, happen as you're writing? For, for me, it just kind of organically happens. Yeah. As you're writing, you, you just obviously you, you, you throw down what you think you need. Yeah. And one of the tricks to doing it really is to try not to be censoring yourself all the time. Mm -hmm. I think if there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's that part of your brain that comes in and starts to say, oh no, you've got too much of this, you've got too right. much of that. Danger is pretty soon it's saying, oh yeah, and that's not very good, and I don't, you know, and you just, you just get stuck. So the thing to do is just to kind of ignore that, just let it flow just onto write. the page. And then worry about the editing later. Exactly, what yeah. I find is a strange thing for me is you can write it on the screen and it looks fine, but if you print it out and read it, so or it, it just, you know, you think, oh, yeah, this part's too long, this part isn't long enough, this right. doesn't quite have the impact I wanted it to have, and you can just tweak and fine-tune. I thought I was the only one who did that. I, when I print out mm -hmm. stories that I work on here, mm -hmm. it, it looks so much different on paper, and I, and I go, oh, now I see the mistake. I need to rewrite this section yeah. right here. Do you remember your first mystery novel? Uh, 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 did that experience come later on in life? Because you said you weren't really a writer early not on in your life. Not at all. Yeah, I remember it very clearly. I was about 10 years old. Yeah. Um, I was at school, and I had a teacher that I absolutely loathed. And um, I, I just, I, I think he didn't really enjoy teaching very much. He didn't really do very much yeah. of it. So I would just take books to school. I'd sit in the corner. I'd, I'd read. And one day he caught me reading a book. And I guess at the time it was probably Watership Down. Do you remember that book about the rabbits Vaguely, and everything? Yeah. Loved that book. But he's, he caught me reading it, and he threw a fit. And he mm. was saying, you think you're a good reader, do you? Well, let me tell you, unless you can go to any bookshelf anywhere, pick up any book, and just read it, you're not a good reader. So I'm thinking, wow, that sounds like so a challenge. Down a challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that night, I went home and I thought, I'll show him. So I went to my dad's bookcase, and I was starting to get a little nervous by this point because I'm thinking, well, what if I can't read the book, and yeah. what if it's no good? What if it's not fun? So I just reached out at random and I pulled down this book off the shelf. It was by Alistair MacLean, and it's called *I Station Zebra*. Okay. And yeah. it was just unbelievable. Blew my mind. Completely yeah. changed. I mean. The title to me, I was too young to really understand. I was thinking, wait, there's a station at the, on the ice and they have animal. You know, I had no right. idea what they were talking about. Yeah. So, you know, zebra was a code name. It was a I cold. I thought it was zebra. Obviously. Yeah, but, <laughs> it <was> zebra. <laughs> well, okay. I was McLean yeah. Scott. Yeah, but it was. Um, it's a Cold War spy thriller, yeah. and it was, I mean, now the technology is, it would, would make the, the kind of mechanics of the story irrelevant because it was based on, Ice Station Zebra was a, allegedly a meteorological station at the North Pole. But really what it was was a device for retrieving these rolls of microfilm that satellites had taken, spy satellites, mm -hmm. and had dropped down. And the whole thing, the thing that did it for me was that the main character, he just lied all the time. You know, we're, we're all familiar now with the unreliable narrator, but as a 10-year-old, I had no concept that if you were writing something, you could lie. So here's this guy, he has to blag his way onto an American nuclear right, submarine, right. so he has some story. 
that's revealed to be untrue. So it's like, oh, well, okay, yeah, that wasn't true. But this is what I'm really doing.